All right, everyone. This is episode 12, titled Bill Haley and the Comets. And this is the Bearded Music Teacher podcast. I'm Mr. Ear, also known as the Bearded Music Teacher. And this podcast channel is devoted to an educational channel of or series of podcasts for my students to get a quick and concise method of what we do in the classroom. Just the facts, the listening activities, again, from previous podcast episodes that I've said before, any audio that I suggest will not be played on the podcast for um, preservation of copyright laws and limits. Now, we've talked about other uh, artists, and we still have actually one more after this episode to talk about, and that's Buddy Holly. Um, but there's an anthem of the teenage teenage uh, uh, wave of rock, if you will, and that is Rock Around the Clock, uh, done by Bill Haley. And it was used to bridge the transformation between rock, or I'm sorry, R&B to pop. And why is this song the anthem? Well, if you look at the lyrics of Rock Around the Clock, it really kind of like what School Days by Chuck Berry did was describe the normal teenage day. Um, This did a thing of, hey, look, with this rock music, we're going to rock, in other words, party, and have fun and just do what we want around the clock, uh, 24-7, we're going to have fun, and we're going to be teenagers. And the teenagers resonated with this. They were like, yes, this is what we need. And so weeks after the um, the Elvis deal with Sun Records, Sam Phillips moved to Carl Perkins in 1955. Um, he laid down, honey, don't and his biggest hit, Blue Suede Shoes. So that's another important thing to recognize with that. But Bill Haley is one of those guys that um, really is the, the, the wild card, if you will. He wasn't really what you would think of as a huge um, rock and roller. You know, you have, you have, like I said, with Blue Suede Shoes and, and, and that, that was Elvis. But with Bill Haley, he's more of a Western swing band leader. In fact, his his band, uh, Bill Haley and his Comets, was a Western swing, uh, Western swing group. And so they came out of Chester, Pennsylvania, and uh, they really, again, like I said, got a huge hit, and and were put on the map with Rock Around the Clock. And I, and I purposely play. Happy Days. I purposely play the beginning of Happy Days. The first couple episodes have Rock Around the Clock on as the um, as the the Happy Days theme song, and so it goes the one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock that one. So <laughs> let's go into uh, Bill Haley here. Um, he started being a guitarist at the age of fifteen. And he really rooted himself in country and western swing. And uh, he had a group called the Saddlemen. That was his group's initial name. And they added elements of R&B. And uh, he was stated that he took uh, country and western and blended it with rhythm and blues. And that was, to him, rock. Now, if you look at it, that's exactly what rock is, where we have this combination or collision of country and R&B mixing together to create rock music. And so um, the group scored success with, in 1953, Crazy Man Crazy. Now this goes, this goes before Bill Haley's big hit of Rock Around the Clock. And so uh, that one is, is one that if you want to get an idea of before the uh, them as rock and then after that would be a place to start then the next year they did shake rattle and roll which this is where 
we also talk about this thing called the Hokum Blues. And um, so Shake, Rattle, and Roll was originally done by Big Joe Turner. Shake, Rattle, and Roll was deemed as an inappropriate song to be played on most radio stations. And I actually don't play it for at least a Big Joe Turner one. I don't play it for my students because to me it's like, "Mm, probably not a good idea. There's a lot of double meanings behind the Big Joe Turner um, thing. So what I do is I tell my students, get your parents' permission to watch, to listen to it, um, because there there are some things that we don't necessarily want to talk about. But what they did is they they approached Bill Haley with this song, and they wanted to market it. Again, this is all about marketing to the white middle class teenager. And so what they did is they took out a lot of the double meanings and they put very innocent language in there. Um, and even it, it's still there's if you really look at it, there's not a lot of changes, but it really does change the message of it to more of a wholesome song instead of kind of code for things that are seen back then as inappropriate. And so what they did is they released it and it became a hit reaching number one on the Billboard R&B charts. And then in the same year, they did Rock Around the Clock. And interestingly enough is that it was issued as a B-side. Now, a lot of times people go, well, what is that? And you really have to know what what we mean by that. So on a record, we have two sides. We have an A-side and a B-side. An A-side is usually one that is charts very well in the charts. Um, then you have a B side, which is kind of like a, well, here's another song, but eh, whatever. Um, and it was largely overlooked. Uh, Rock around the clock was until Blackboard Jungle brought it to prominence. That's a movie that um, is an absolute. Um, if you study film of the 1950s, it was a huge, huge um, film for that the the teenagers of that time. Um, and it went over, it went on to sell over 20 million copies and in 1957 became the first, he became the first, Bill Haley that is, first musician to tour Europe of the rock and roll genre. So it's the rock around the clock is an interesting, um, song because it wasn't seen as a huge hit until the movie that it was played in. Now, it wasn't meant to be played in the movie. It wasn't written for the movie. It was a, hey, look, here's this song. Let's include it in the movie. And so that's where it gained its ground. But he then um, he, he then went over to Europe in 1957, like I said, and Actually, among those in attendance, and this is where kind of things cross paths, Paul McCartney um, later on said that he was in attendance to the tour of Bill Haley coming over to Europe. And that's that's important because that is a direct connection where the, uh, the Beatles are more pop-based like these guys, um, more pop rock, I guess you could say. Um, whereas the Rolling Stones, the, the, the anti Beatles, I guess you could call them, even though they were really good friends, um, they, they were more blues based, but nonetheless, Haley performed and toured, um, with multiple lineups of the Comets. The Comets just kind of were, again, were his backing band and they kind of came in and out, in and out. And there was, uh, I guess an ever changing really lineup of people who played in the Comets, um, and at age 55 in 1981, um, Bill Haley, uh, passed away due to a heart attack and he was inducted, um, six years later into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. If I'm not mistaken, 87 was either the first or second year of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And so, um, Bill Haley, if you want to know more about him, he didn't have a lot in the way of discography when it comes to. Um, huge credits, but I would highly recommend Shake, Rattle, and Roll and Rock Around the Clock. I would also check out Just Watching. If you can get a copy of Blackboard Jungle, 
um, just watching that movie to get an idea on that, uh, get an idea on what that, that drama was like. And that had a lot to do with juvenile delinquency, uh, meaning juvenile bad boys, young boys and men doing, uh, criminal acts, I guess you could say. Um, so make sure you check out Crazy Man Crazy. And then I would follow up with, uh, Rock Around the Clock as two of the things that I would, I would use to show Bill Haley as before and after. And then if you could come across other, um, performances and other concerts of his on the internet, that'd also be another one. But again, Crazy Man Crazy and Rock Around the Clock would be two that I would highly recommend. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this episode, episode 12 of the Bearded Music Teacher Podcast. Please follow me on Twitter, which is at MR underscore E underscore music FCS. And this also is going to be on all different platforms, the podcast, the video of it is also going to be on my uh, school, my school account for uh, YouTube. And that's where you can find the exact same audio, just with a couple of visuals from the slide deck that I use in school. And that is it, guys. Have a good one and keep listening to the podcasts. Share these podcasts as we rock and roll through rock history.